All right. Let me, um, why don't you start warming up a little bit? Okay, take your time getting him used to the ring. Take your time. We have, I feel like we have a really great variety of horses, huh? Like the horse we saw before, the young one, I mean, you see a world-class quality, huh? And uh, it's interesting for me, too, to have so many different um, qualities, age, breeds, and they're all fun in their own way. Good. Very good, yeah. One of the things I always ask myself with each horse to make each session really count. Like, what is the goal like especially in my warm up with every each horse has its own little difficulties or things i want to accomplish um so the two questions i ask myself how do i design it does my horse warm up better in the canter or in the trot does my horse warm up better when i do like 10 minute good walk work besides the fact that they have to walk to warm up and loosen up their joints and everything but also sometimes what i do is 10 minutes of leg yields half passes in the walk every horse is different so designing a warm-up that suits each horse and also what are you expecting to get done in your warm-up and by that i mean also a little bit you know, if you have a hotter horse, to calm it a little bit down and get it more onto your legs. And if you have a horse that's a little bit more behind the leg, to use the warm up to put in place a little bit more in front of the le leg state of mind. Good, and this one needs to be a little bit more off your inner aids and your inside leg a little bit more by the girth. He is quite short in his back, huh? And then the neck is nice and reaching out and long, which is great. Good. And every turn, have a little bit the feeling that he goes a little bit off of your inner leg, in his body, into the outside rein. Do actually a couple leg yields from where you turn just a little bit sooner, and then you do a long leg yield where you teach him a little bit to move off your right leg by the girth, and then position him right, and he needs to get the neck a little lower where he doesn't use his neck to balance and comes up and down in it, but where he arches, that's better. He has to arch the neck and loosen up the bottom part of the neck. Yes, good, good, and get the neck a little bit down. Oh, 
and off your inner leg. Like that, good. Without that, he drops the contact, of course. Good. So with contact, good, yeah, good, good, into the left rein, good, and then a little bit the other way, good, good, and then prepare for a transition to trot, good. And off the inner leg, onto the, yes, and try not to just kick, but come a little bit with the leg by the girth. So don't push the haunches to your left, push his shoulders and rib cage to your left, into the left rein. So ride a little bit the shoulders to your left by your inner leg. The show, that's right. And then position his head a little bit to the right. Good. And then change direction. Good. And then to the left, position his shoulders a little bit to the right. So you ride diagonally from your left leg to the right rein. Yeah. Good. 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 And it can't become a drifting, so keep him straight. That's what I mean. That's to me just haunches out. It's not even a shoulder in, but let's not start with that. Start with... Like, what does true bend mean? So that means, can you push his belly and shoulders to, the, to your right? And your leg, not, you know, exactly. Put your heel under your hip and ride a little bit with your calf. Yeah, good. That's better. Good, good. And then make the circle around me a little bit smaller for a second. Good, good, and stay here, good. Don't go bigger, stay here, stay here. Position him a little to the inside. Good, good, but keep your inner leg on, that's right. Good, stay here. Now, you're gonna make the circuit bigger, keeping everything the same. Just squeeze your left leg and push him out and keep everything the same. Good, good. Yeah. Good. And then a transition to the left lead canter. Outside rein. Good. And on the bit. Yes. Good. Good. Try not to go faster. Yeah. And do a couple quarter lines. Good. Like that. Better. With a little bit of a yielding. More left, a little bit positioning left, and come a little bit more with your left leg. Good. Good. Better. Good. And make him look left, not right. To the inside. Yes. Crescent shape. Try to ride a crescent shape into your horse. Outside rain has to receive that energy. Good. Better. Very good. Once more. Better, good, good. Then the canter gets better. Outside rain has to, there you go, beautiful. Better, and then come around me in the same way. Yes, now the canter gets a little bit more organized. Good with your inner leg, good. And outside rein a little bit. You're doing the right thing on the inside, but be a little bit receiving on the right. Yes, and that's when you ride with your leg, and with your leg, and with your leg, and round. Come, come. Yeah, he has to canter now through the reins and not stop there. Exact, come. You feel how he wants to stop? He has to go through the reins. Good. And your reins have to be invitational to say, go through my reins. Good, good, good. And then a transition to trot. Good, better. Yep, stay forward in front of the leg. Good, good. 
In the transition, he has to keep a little bit more of the balance, yeah? That you have to focus on sitting straight and not tip forward. Good. Transition to walk, just a tiny little break, but in the break, we're going to do leg yields across the diagonal. So he gets to walk a little bit, but do a couple leg yields. And catch the jigging off, because that's like you're not receiving. So now the jigging off is very interesting. It shows you that your forward driving aids and your rein aids are not coordinated to each other, because you push, and then you let the energy out by little quick jiggy steps in the front. You should receiving the energy and ride them around through the reins. Good. That's it. Perfect. Good. Very good. And then do the same on the next diagonal. And riding with your leg to the reins, so you feel like the energy goes through the reins, so that the connection gets better. And not that he chomps the bit when you push, and he keeps the energy right there, as if he was sitting in front of a closed door. And the closed door is your hands. That's why you have to make it invitational and you have to adjust a little bit the height of the neck and the looseness of the neck. Yes, that's better. And now he takes a bigger step. Yes, good. Slightly positioning to the inside, the pole. So I always ask myself, can I? Good, like that. And then inner leg, very good. Yes, good. Try to catch him when he, yeah, and keep your leg in contact. Whoa, whoa, and leg in contact. Tell him, take a bigger step in the hind leg. Good. Now go straight from the left, and then yield him to your right. But don't make, yeah, don't let him fall. So position him left. He has to look left. It's a leg yield. Yeah, he has a left, yes. And then straight, and then yield him off your right. Good and then straight, and yield him off your left. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Into the corner with the left aids down center line. Very good. And then yield him off your left leg. Very good. And straight. And yield him off your right. Keep the forward, OK? That, yes. Especially when you change direction. Right leg, good. Now straight from the left, forward, and then off your left. Haunches, slightly positioning him left, good. And then straight from your right, and then off of your right. That's it. Very good. And then track right, good. Now a transition here on a circle from walk to canter. No, walk on the bit so that the transition is going to get him stronger because he can't drop the back. Because in the back, all he uses, if he drops the back, he uses his front. And you want to get the hind leg a little stronger so he has to push off from the hind end. Good. And then make the circle smaller around me. Good. And the same concept of the leg yield without doing a leg yield, really riding the inside of his body. Neck down and come smaller. Good, like that. Good, quarter line to quarter line. Good, and the neck down and riding. Very good, very good. That's it. Now make the circus bigger only from your right leg. Just push the belly out. Keep him looking right. And don't let him speed up into the left rein. Yes, make the circle bigger. Round, 
into the left. That's right, round into the left, looking right. Round, move them in the shoulders more to the right. That's it. Really like a leg yield, yield them over in the shoulders, all the way, that's it. And then now come smaller again and keep your inner eight uh, on, quarter line to quarter line. Inner leg, inner leg, bending, come. Yes, riding, come. Quarter line to quarter line, outside eight, so that he doesn't tip his nose to the right. Good, and now make the circle bigger from your right leg into the left rein. Have the left rein a little bit open so you invite him, it's a directional, that's it, exactly, good. There you go. Inner leg, good, very good. He has to seek and step into the left rein, that's it, better, better, very good. And then a transition to trot, same concept. The left rein is a little bit of a directional rein Inner leg stays on, yeah, and he has to stay around. Push him off the inner leg when you do the downward. Not that you do your trot transition and he falls against your inner leg. Yeah, that's right, and keep good. good. Yeah, that's where he has to be a little bit more connected and on the track, in, uh, off the right leg. Right leg more by the girth. Good, good. Good, and the transition to walk. Sit, good, and round, and through the reins, and through the reins, and through the reins. Yes, yes, very good, very good, very good, that's right. Even if he drops a little, the contact, wait it out, don't be, yes, and walking, yes, not